When working in 3D, sometimes you want to have a nice clean transition between geometries, especially if you're going for a realistic look. So I figured we would take a look at how we can create this type of effect inside Houdini. So let's go ahead and drop down a geometry node. So this project file will be available on Patreon. I will put up the demo file that you saw from with the rock and the grass and everything. So we'll walk through in this fresh scene how to do it. And then, like I said, you can download the project file through Patreon. We'll also take a look at that here in just a moment. So let's go ahead and create a grid, which is going to act as our terrain. Let's go ahead and just up the rows and columns a little bit here. And then let's create some geometry that we're going to use to create this little skirt. So we'll drop in a rubber toy. We'll use that as our geometry. You're going to disable the shader. I'm also going to drop in just a clean node and just remove the UVs there. So I don't really need those right now. And let's go ahead and drop in a merge node. Let's wire in that clean and our terrain. And if I take a look here, you can see the this transition is what I'm talking about. So where the two objects meet, that would look really bad in shading. It wouldn't look very realistic at all if you're trying to have maybe an object sunk into the ground. So let's go ahead and show how we can avoid that. And the way we use that is a dirt skirt node in from the from the labs tool set. So we need two things. We need our input, which is going to be our first input is going to be our object that we are going to have in our mesh. And then the second object is going to be the terrain. So let's go ahead and cook that out and we get some geometry here. So we have a bunch of different settings in here. The first thing I'm going to do is check on keep the ground mesh and keep the object mesh just so that we can see what's going on inside of our node. So we have a bunch of different settings here to start off with. I'm going to just up this resolution. So we'll give it like 10,000 poly counts and that gives us a lot better resolution here. Something a little bit better to work with, a little bit easier to manipulate. So like I said, we have a bunch of different settings in here. We can play with the distance and that's going to be where it, the skirt starts and ends. So if I raise the object skirt, it's going to go higher up the mesh. Obviously, if I lower that, it's going to go down. And the ground, if I raise that, it's going to go further away from our object. And if I lower it, it's going to obviously come closer. So let's set it to something like this and let's take a look at some of these other settings so we have noise frequency and intensity so we can control kind of how these edges look so if i up the frequency it's going to just make it a little less noisy and if i lower it it's going to make it more noisy same goes with the ground so let's maybe just drop that a little bit give us something like this and we can also rotate the geometry. I don't really mess with that much, but that's kind of some different settings that you can use if you want. But the other thing that we need to correct is going to be this kind of harsh transition between the two. So it's going to have a very steep incline up our mesh, which creates some issues. You see it's kind of going through our object here, which we don't really want. So let's go ahead and just up this relaxation iterations. You can see that we start to kind of smooth that out. So maybe I'll set it to something like this and let's go ahead and tweak the distance here. Maybe like we'll set it back to that 0.15 and see what that gives us. So that's not too bad. It gives us a couple of little holes here, which would be somewhat realistic. So we'll just kind of roll with this. But we do have a couple of other issues here. Most notably, you can see that this is sitting off of our object, which we don't really want. So let's go ahead and rectify that. Let's go ahead and just uncheck both of those keep ground mesh and keep object mesh. And let's create a group. And with this group, we're going to set it to a edges group type. And then we're going to include by edges. And we're going to check the unshared edges. What that's going to give us is basically all of the outside edges of our mesh. And that's what we're going to be snapping to our object. So just looking for the outside edges, not looking for any inside points. Let's go ahead and promote that to a point group. 
So we'll do, let's actually rename that, call it edges. And we'll promote that. We'll just keep the same name there. So like I said, we're going to snap these points to our other object. So let's create a ray node. That gives us a really easy way to snap points to other objects. And the first input is going to be those points. The second input is going to be both our terrain as well as our object that we had created the little dirt skirt from. And let's set this to points and from project rays to a minimum distance. And uncheck that show guide geometry. So this gives us some weird results because we forgot to set the group type to just those edges. And if I zoom in on these edges now and just enable and disable this, you can see that that gives us some different results. So let's re-enable that. Let's set a merge node down and let's merge in both the dirt skirt as well as our object from before. And now you can see that we have this nicely fitted skirt along our object. We do have a little bit of a harsh transition between the meshes here. You can see that it is pretty heavy there, which you may not want. So we can just drop a smooth node down after that ray stop and just crank this up. And you can see that that kind of smooths that out for us. Now, be careful because it will kind of create some of these issues that you see going on there. So you may need to play around with it a little bit with your settings, see what gives you kind of the best results. Or maybe that's going to be okay because it's not going to be in the view. And again, we got more geometry poking through here. So, and that actually comes from our initial, our initial skirt here. So maybe we drop that down to like 0.1 and maybe that gets rid of the issue. Just play around with the different settings and you can get some different things. Let's go ahead and jump over to the initial project file and we'll take a look at some other stuff here. So let's go ahead and just disable the other objects and take a look at just our rock. So this is a Megascans asset as well as the texture for the ground here is a Megascans asset as well. So up until here, it was about the same. So we just created our little skirt that we got going on here. And then I smoothed it out a little bit. Now, from here, I created a group, and this is gonna be just the top edge. So I manually just selected that top edge to give us a transition between the object and the dirt skirt. So I'm just adding some color, a white color to this, because we're gonna use this in shading. And then I selected that top edge for the group and set that to black. That's gonna create a little bit of a fall off for us. So if I use an attribute blur, it gives us a little bit of a fall off on that edge. And then we can bring that into our material and just plug that into the opacity and that gives us a nice little transition between the two objects. So that's pretty much all for this dirt skirt node. You can create some pretty interesting looks with it. So make sure to take a look at it and see if it's gonna be useful for your situation. Uh, maybe you find it interesting for creating some other types of effects. I got one in mind, which we may take a look at in the future, depending on how it works out. So stay tuned for that. But like I said, these project files will be available in the description. I'll drop this one in. You won't obviously get the Megascans asset, which if you want, it's called this granite rock whatever that is. And, uh, I also used this ground texture, which is, let's see, ground forests, whatever, whatever that is. So, but obviously you can use whatever, whatever one that you want. So just download some different assets and toss them in there and play around with it. See what you get. But like I said, grab these project files if you want them. Hopefully this helped you out and you found this interesting. If you want to learn more about Houdini, I have a bunch of other videos on Houdini as well as some things on Redshift as well. So if you want to learn Redshift inside Houdini or just Houdini itself, make sure to check those out. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.